guys and welcome to this new video. So here is my take on that infamous pixel shot. I just wanted to give my own twist and thought this could be a nice subject for a video. So the shot in question is this Grand Tour compositing tutorial that you can find in the link in the description. Be sure to grab uh, the project and to give a read to this um, tutorial which is packed with useful information. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out that Fusion 17.2 is out and as you can see, we now have access to these new layouts and this mid-flow is my personal favorite. This is something that I've been dreaming for the last couple of years and I'm really happy that Fusion finally implemented this vertical layout. Okay, so let's get started. Unfortunately, they do not provide all the AOVs uh, for this scene, uh, so all we have is a beauty pass and and some technical passes such the ward normals and the ward position pass, a Z depth and a few other reflection passes, incandescence and some other stuff. Okay, so let's get started with our beauty. Since I'm working in uh, in ACCG, I used a gamut node to to convert from linear to ACCG, and I set my viewer lat accordingly. So I set the source space to ACCG and the auto space to sRGB, and then using channel booleans, I shuffled in the word normal pass and the word position pass and I simply set the RGBA channels to do nothing and copying the uh, red green and blue channel to the X Y and Z normals and the same was done in the word position pass and uh, I copied the RGB uh, channels into the X Y and Z position so now as you can see, I have my normals and position uh, in the right place. As you can see, both the normals and the word position pass are row, and that means that the mm, passes are not uh, normalized. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is to take care of some relighting, and to do that, I'm going to use two different nodes and those are the shader node and the volume mask. So let me show you how those two nodes works. In order to uh, the volume mask to work, you will need a, a word position pass. So as you can see, I can select the shape and let's go for a sphere here and I can pick my position uh, using the word position pass. As you can see, I have a very tiny white spot here. Since the word position pass is not normalized, I will have to increase the value of the size here up to more than 100. And you can now see the volume mask taking place. And so if I sample on my image here, you can see my mask moving uh, where my color picker is. So let's place it right here and maybe make it a little bit smaller. And remember that you can you can soften the edge of your um, selection. And of course you can output only the mask and outputting an alpha channel. So how is this uh, useful? Uh, if you combine this with the shader node, which in order to work uh, you need the normal pass. And as you can see we have a few sliders here. The ambient is the original color of your image and the diffuse is some kind of diffuse lighting. The specular light is this main rim light that you can control with these two equator angle and polar height. Let's forget about reflection by, uh, at the moment, since I'm not using that. And as you can see, if I move my equator angle and the polar height, I can change the light angle. 
So using these in conjunction with the volume mask, I can art direct my relighting. So if I want to have the relight only on this cliff here, I can do that. And this is exactly what I did in my comp, but before doing that, I added a alpha divide and a global color correction, which which was something pretty basic, just a little bit of gamma adjustment and some shifting to the warm tones. And then I added this kind of trick that I use sometimes, which adds this kind of, uh, see, um, this is some kind of ambient lighting. And to do that, I basically shuffled out using a copy aux my normals and I used the remapping so to normalize my uh, word normal pass and I use a color space transform set to CMY to invert my normal pass and basically I use this texture node to map the colors of this image here which is a, an HDRI which is provided in the uh, project files with the project files and which I blurred quite a lot and this is the result with the texture node and as you can see i kept the blend very low and this is the result and i think it works pretty well in this case and then i started using some volume masks and for example here a color correction just to add some highlight here on the tree and added some rim light here on the on the carter here and I added another one to have some highlight here on the cliff and another one as well um, all trying to keep the angle of the light consistent as consistent as possible and I wanted to add you see here I have this kind of uh, yellowish highlight here that I wanted to replicate here and I tried to do this using another shader node but the result was giving me some uh, darken, darkening on the edges so I, I, I avoided that um, basically using a clean plate to extend the edges and to do that I piped the shader the output of the shader in both the uh, background input and the garbage mat input and then inverted the garbage mat and just grew the edges and again here I have my volume mask and I had to do the same basically extending the edges of the volume mask and in this case I just used a, a road dilate set to box to just extend a little bit my uh, volume mask and here is the result as you can see again the blending is uh, very low and um, the operation is set to add as you can see normal and the alpha gain is set to zero equals an add operation then um, I then I spotted that we had some pretty high values here we have pixels on the red channel with value of 3 uh, or even 4 and so I, um, I used a, a tetrahedral interpolation which is a fuse that you can find on reactor by Jacob Danel and the stone mapper macro that I made that you can find on reactor as well and using these uh, polygon mask to uh, restrict the area of influence of these two uh, color corrections so as you can see before and after and uh, then I used this uh, MOS pass this is a MOS AOV and I use a bitmap node to make it into a mask and just added a color correction to um, as you can see just color correct the moss in the scene and uh, then I added 
another brightness contrast with uh, a mask here as you can see on the character here just to brighten it up a little bit and the last step was to alpha multiply everything so let me let me show you the before and after this is the before and this is after my relighting and as you can see the difference is pretty pretty dramatic here okay let's move on here so the next step was to put together a background what I did is actually to start with this gradient which is provided in the in the project file and all these images that I'm using have been converted into SCCG and as you can see I used a gamut node uh, and set the source space to sRGB and remove gamma to uh, ACCG and I did that for all the images uh, that I used for the um, for the background so these two images this gradient and these and those clouds are provided in the project file uh, this one and this other one that I used um, I basically did a Google search and downloaded from some website which I really cannot remember uh, so um, this was pretty easy actually just a reduced noise done with neat video this is the before and this is the after and then I just as you can see add some color correction and merged them on top using a mask and basically did something very similar here with the other cloud that I downloaded from Google and then I used the another instance of the Tether Eater interpolation and one color corrector to add some you know uh, warm tones I was looking to um, some kind of um, sunset look and added another uh, color corrector just to have some kind of uh, gradient here from cold to warm tones and then added these last image here and as you can see this is the result and uh, at the end I added a tiny bit of the focus because you know I just wanted it to be a little bit out of focus and merged two copy one behind my CG and this tiny bit of uh, the same I think I scaled this yeah scaled and uh, moved a little bit and use this mask here just to have an indication of some of the atmosphere coming here under the cliff okay then um, the next step was to add this smoke trail here and I used a bitmap node to drive a mask into a blur node and I used this mask to blur the background and then merged the smoke trail on top and added this um, color correction just to have the trail to disappear uh, with the distance and as you can see here I'm using gain and with the alpha on here so that I can have this opacity control basically okay so enough for the smoke let's move to the glow setting and here as you can see I'm using this alpha channel from the beauty to drive this fast expo glow and I'm piping the alpha here into the glow mask so I basically I'm basically glowing only the sky here and as you can see I'm getting this nice hazy look and then I'm using these um, I think this is a specular pass yeah into a bitmap node to drive 
the mask for this second fast expo glow and as you can see it, it adds some glow to the brightest element of the image and then I'm using this incandescence uh, path with a merge node set to add here to have this element a little bit shinier okay we're almost there and here now um, I added this depth of field and as you can see I'm getting this nice result here I'm using these fuse which is uh, by June and I'm linking it into the description and uh, I have to say that sometimes I'm, I struggle to uh, get the desired result with this fuse but in this case it worked pretty well the only issue here is that so this uh, Z pass is kind of strange so uh, Z pass should look something like so maybe or let me see something something like like this but as you can see the uh, the alpha channel and the technical pass look completely different so uh, I ended up just adding a second um, background node with this um, dark tone and uh, basically just having um, this tone to be uh, around where the focal point is so everything that is at this dark tone is basically in focus and having this part of the image out of focus okay so the last step is some post effect and the first one is some color correction uh, which is you know very basic I did some shadow and highlight uh, tinting and some gamma control and saturation nothing fancy and then I added uh, some a little bit of vignette and I used my fast chroma macro to add some chromatic aberration and before after as you can see it's very 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 light effect but I think it adds a little bit and the film grain as you can see I set it to be not monochrome and log processing so that I have uh, this nice film blur here uh, sorry film grain here and my last node is a gamut node from ACCG to sRGB and this is the result okay so I'm very happy with the result here um, be sure to go to the renderman um, website and download the project file so that you can have fun with that and maybe learn something in the process if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section down below thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one bye bye